Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, the podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I am the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, Elder Candidate at Redeemer Fellowship. Dang, dude, you're still Elder Candidate. Well, when this is recorded... By the time this is released, mm-hmm. you will have completed. Uh, I will have the paper completed. You I guess have it depends. You, you when will the... have done everything on your end. Yes. By the time this is released. Correct. Which is March something. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. Just making yep. sure. No, no, no. Okay. I'm on pace. All right. On pace. On, on track. Pace. On target. I on am point. on target. Yeah. To turn it in. Yeah. Are you down? I, you're, you're I am. Down. I'm down with the sickness. Yeah, I was, well, you I, know? and you're down. Okay, good. I like that. Yeah, like you know, that. you know, the, how you like that reference? I do. I like that. It? I do. Yeah, yeah, not a bad you. song. Yeah, not a, a bad really song. Great song. I'm gonna listen on the way home. You know what I was listening to on the drive-in? Oh, go Rene- ahead. Renegades of Funk. Renegades of Funk. Seriously, dude. <laughs> what? what? Who, you don't know that song? No. No. Go ahead. Yeah, this is silly. All right. Play Renegades of Funk. <laughs> Hang on, let me try again. Ready? All right, check it out. Mm-hmm. Play Renegades of Funk. All right, check it out. Oh, that's pretty good. You know that song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you not know that song? No, I do know. I just don't remember the name. I mean, I don't know if you want to hear what I was listening to. I don't think that, you can. Oh yeah, it. what were you listening to? Do you really want to? This yeah. is just on on my thing right here. Just I'm just gonna hit play again from my headphones. What? You don't like is that, La- is that Latino FM? Yeah, come on. Oh, that's Luis fine. Fonsi and Demi Lovato. Lovato, whatever you know. I know Wait, I did you just go Demi Lovato? Lovato, <laughs> I thought I said A at the end because thinking she's female. You don't listen to Louis. You don't listen to Fonzie? So who is that? It's Fonzie. No, I don't know who this is. You said Demi Lovato. Yeah, she's in it. That's her. But it's his song. It's Gucci Mane La Cupa. Like that. Yeah, it's good. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. You can dance that's like fun. that. I can dance like that. You can. No, oh, you, you can't. know. Yeah, you know what I did? What'd you do last night? Last night I, w- I took my daughter to a daddy daughter dance mm-hmm. at the school, mm-hmm. and of course it was uh, pajama theme. Uh huh. So I wore a suit. Yeah, because um, <laughs> I ain't playing. I'm not wearing pajamas. So, anyways, so we get there, and um, and so the only here's what I noticed. Um, well, first of all, uh, when it, when the first dance. With your dad song came on, because mm-hmm. uh, all the little girls go run and play with them, you know, yeah, play yeah, around yeah. they're all going to hang out, yeah. And then the dads usually hang back and talk to each other, yeah. So, um, so th- th- the song came on. She comes and she gets me, and we go out there, and uh, I, she said, "You're embarrassing me. Why are you dancing like that?" And I'm like, <laughs> "I dance good, girl. Look at this, you know." And I'm like, uh, "I'm doing all these cool dances," and she did. Not for she real, a little though. Did you actually dance? Yeah. No, but I mean, like, well, I know you danced. I, I got rhythm, dude. It was good. She doesn't know. She doesn't listen. She's in third grade. What does she know, right? Uh, she watches MTV. She can dance. She was so. Here's the thing, though. So hold on. She can dance, so which means she can critique good dancing, and her critique of you means you're a bad dancer. Yeah. If you oh! by, by a third oh! by a third grader standard. Now listen. Here's but here's the point. Here's the whole point of the story. Go ahead. All right. So I was I was at this event. All the dads, all the daughters, mm-hmm. and so my daughter Madeline comes up to me early in the evening, and she's like, "Why aren't you talking to anybody?" And I was like, I'm fine right here. I, I've talked to some guys. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, you need to talk to people. I'm like, I'm fine. Then- uh, I like how May May calls you out. And then like a little bit later, she drags a dad over to me. Oh. She's like, hey, this is my dad. Talk to my dad. And I'm, I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing? My name's Joe. And he's like, oh, my name's Bob. I'm like, cool. All right. Nice seeing you. And then, uh, <laughs> so we stopped talking. And then, uh, and then like towards the end of the night, she's like, daddy, why don't you talk to anybody? <laughs> and I said, I had to explain to her that I'm antisocial, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and I'm an introvert. And, and, the, and then I do it for a living. I talk to people all the time. Yeah, I don't it's want to. It's nice to chill. And not talk. I, you know what? It feels pretty good. That's what I thought we were going to do yesterday. And then you invite Steve. I didn't invite Steve. You invited Steve. No, Steve. I thought we were just going to hang out. We were going to hang out. And not talk. Yeah. That's what I love doing with you. Yeah. But, uh, but instead, okay. But the upside is mm. you got to harass Steve for an hour. Right, you kept enough. throwing I <laughs> stuff at his computer. That's all I could do. I'm like, he wouldn't stop talking. All right. I didn't want to talk to him. No one cares about this. What do we talk about today, We're going to talk about divorce. Divorce. Oh. Yeah. Great. I'm going to divorce Steve. Yeah. I did. Did you really? Yeah, oh, yeah. that's kind. Yeah. Is it is it awkward that I'm going out with him tonight? Nope. Nope. I don't care. Okay. Doesn't bother me. Mm. I am uh, I am too tired to care about oh. uh, my BFF cheating on me. I'm not cheating on uh, you. Okay, all right. Whatever I'm not you cheating on you. Yeah, it's okay. I guess we have an open relationship. Whatever. <laughs> 
Well, if you love it, put a ring on it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, well, I, I get you stuff, though. I Maybe not a ring. All right, listen. You got you know, me we got, we got to get into this. All right, let's do it. All right, so uh, we get requests. We've been getting requests to talk about divorce. Um, yeah, we've gotten a, f- a number of people right, asking about this. Even, in fact, uh, Jake, who works here at the church, mm-hmm. um, mentoring the youth and running our youth program, uh, You know, he's had this conversation before with people yeah. and with friends, yeah. and uh, he goes, why don't you cover the topic of divorce? So uh, Jimmy and I... Jimmy and I thought, yeah, let's do that and get in trouble with everybody because we're sure to upset or frustrate some group out there. Oh, uh, for sure. Absolutely. I'm, I mean, I'm guessing that very few people are going to agree with us on our whole view. Oh, we're yeah. Because we're going to agree with parts. Yeah, yeah. yeah because I mean, we're pretty much of the camp that uh, you can kind of go about it all willy nilly and just, you know, uh, marry, divorce, marry, divorce, marry, divorce, marry, marry, marry. As long divorce. as you're moving up the social it's, ladder, that's it. That's and it's fine. That's all it is. Right. Marriage is just a way of consolidating power. Yeah, I like this, and that's that's kind of the way you know I think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and at least the way Michelle thought about it is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is to consolidate and get that green card. It's it's a, well, and, and a, yeah, she got the green card, but you got the prenup, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't get a prenup. Oh, of course well, I did. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so of course I would not. We are. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of... That's actually an interesting t- question. Prenup? Prenup for Christians. I, I, sincerely. Yeah. That's, a, that's a just interesting question. What is that? I don't care. You don't think so? I actually do. Keep no, going. I just... I, you know. You know, when, when you've got as much money as I do, it doesn't, <laughs> you, could give, you could give two-thirds of it away. It wouldn't matter, you know? <laughs> Or maybe two-thirds, it is. Of, two-thirds of it away? Yeah, yeah, so be like, so yeah. So you yeah. could buy a, you know, when you gave away two-thirds, the person could buy a Huffy bike. Dude, if you, if two-thirds of a, I mean, that's almost 50%. So that's what I'm, I know my math. All right, so. Um, so yeah, what is divorce? Let's let's start there. All right, well, so divorce is essentially the annulment, not the annulment, actually, that's a different thing. Yeah. Um, but is the dissolution, right? It's the it's the dissolution. Yeah. Of uh, of a marriage, it's the, it's it's a legal dissolution. It is a recognizable um, a dissolution of um, the marriage covenant yeah. itself, right? So yep. that's that's pretty simple. Most of us know what divorce is, and um, I think we all know, uh, biblically speaking, that divorce yeah. wasn't a part of the original plan. No, no. Right? I mean, you see that in Genesis uh, two. Uh, Verse 24, therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. I I like those two words kind of being used there uh, that Crossway is using or the the ESV is using. Uh, Hold fast, right? So they cling. It's something that you're committed to, Mm -hmm. and they shall become one flesh. There's this union there, this this. To go with Chandler, mingling of souls, right. you know, together uh, as as the two become one. Now, he didn't invent that. I don't, uh, I'm just trying to throw it, you know, because he, he had the book. He's got the book. It's and it's great. It's great because uh, the design, right? The design is is that a man and a woman would come together and yeah. remain together for the duration of their lives. Yeah, and uh, and that's that's a union. It's it's a covenant that's made. That's does not till death do us part. Mm-hmm. We like to say uh, what God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. Let no yep. man separate. And so we we recognize that whatever divorce is, and we haven't even gotten into how it is or is not uh, applicable to uh, the life of godliness. Yeah. Um, whatever divorce is, it was not a part of the original plan for marriage. No. It is a consequence of sin in the world. Oh, absolutely. Right? Because of the fall, uh, you know, now, now sin has entered. Hardness of heart has... Has come selfishness is is reigning, and I think um, I, I, you know we'll talk about it later. But Jesus touches on that mm-hmm. in, in Matthew nineteen with the hardness of heart. Moses yeah. allowed because of the hardness of heart. Yeah. So the question is, is you know a lot of, a lot of people will look at that and they'll say like, okay, so it wasn't a part of the design. Yeah. Uh, it's allowed because of hardness of heart, and it's all, I almost get the sense that like, hey, listen, it was only allowed because of hardness of heart. So don't do it. And it's like, well, the, okay. Um, there, there, there may or may not be, uh, you know, legit reasons for divorce. Yeah. Um, but let's just say if God permits something, it mm-hmm. isn't sin, right? If God is permitting something, if he's telling us you can do this, then whatever that is in the, the, the right context, it isn't sin. Okay. 
So let's just walk through a few passages in the Old Testament, Jimmy. Um, yeah. Uh, and we'll, we'll start in the Old Testament. We'll touch on, on the New as well. And then uh, just to get, kind of get a sense for what are some of the things that the Bible has to say about divorce and what shape did it take uh, in the Scripture? Yeah, I mean, Leviticus 22, verses 12 and 13 says this, If a priest's daughter marries a layman, she shall not eat of the contribution of the holy things. But if a priest's daughter is widowed or divorced and has no child and returns to her father's house, as in her youth, she may eat of her father's food, yet no lay person shall eat of it. Okay, so summarize, Jimmy. Big picture. Yeah, summarize. I mean, the big picture here is uh, there's this idea of there is divorce. There is, you know, there's the the sense of someone being widowed or divorced. So, you know, I think in in this context, in this picture here, uh, divorce happens. And it and that her being divorced, as you mentioned before, uh, doesn't necessarily mean she's unclean or unholy because she can go back mm-hmm. and still partake of the holy things right. uh, that that is brought before. It. Right. So, uh, also like in Deuteronomy twenty four, uh, verses one and two, when a man mm-hmm. takes a wife and marries her, if then she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some indecency in her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house, and she departs out of his house, and if she goes and becomes another man's wife, and the latter man hates her and writes her a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house, or if the latter man dies, who took her to be his wife, Mm -hmm. then her former husband, who sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife after she has been defiled, For that is an abomination before the Lord, and you shall not bring sin upon that land. The Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance. There is a whole heck of a lot going on in those four verses. But let's just say one of the things that we see here is that there is um, an appropriate sense in which divorce can happen and remarriage can happen and an inappropriate sense in which uh, this may happen. So um, God allows it but he puts parameters on it. Mm-hmm. It's not just like you were saying, willy nilly, make yeah. it up as you go. If you want to get a divorce, if you fall out of love, go ahead and, and, and get a divorce. It's, yeah. it's not like that. In fact, we know how God feels about the way people treat divorce in Malachi. Yeah. I mean, Malachi uh, chapter two, verses 10 to 16 uh, says this, have we not all one father has not, one God created us. Why then are we faithless to one another, profaning the covenant of our fathers? Judah has been faithless and abomination has been committed in Israel and Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the sanctuary of the Lord, which he loves and has married the daughter of a foreign God. May the Lord cut off from the tents of Jacob any descendant of the man who does this, who brings an offering to the Lord of hosts. And the second thing you do, you cover the Lord's altars with tears, with weeping and groaning because he no longer regards the offering or accepts it with favor from your hand. But you say, why does he not? Because the Lord has witnessed between you and the wife of your youth Mm -hmm. to whom you have been faithless, though she is your companion and your wife and by covenant, like Joe was talking about earlier, did he not make them one with a portion of the spirit in their union and what was the one God seeking? Godly offspring. So guard yourselves in your spirit and let none of you be faithless to the wife of your youth. For the man who does not love his wife but divorces her, says the Lord, the God of Israel covers his garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. So guard yourselves in your spirit and do not be faithless. There's a lot there. Yeah. But There's again, a lot there. Right, we, we, we get this. We get this really clear sense mm-hmm. that um, God hates, and we read this right. God hates divorce, yeah. um, but we also see that He permits it, and we're also going to see that He commands it. Um, yeah. And so when he, when we read that He hates divorce, what we can see is that He hates divorce in the context of unjust, ungodly men who dismiss their wives without cause, who don't provide for them and take care of them. Correct. It's important for us to understand why divorce exists, right? I mean, it, God didn't invent divorce. We didn't uh, invent divorce as the people of God. Divorce was a reality in the world after the fall. And what what we see is God makes allowance for this uh, among his people yeah. under certain conditions for the protection that's it of the spouses right so if if a, if a woman 
is given a, a certificate of divorce in the Old Testament. Uh, she is sent away. She is free to marry mm-hmm. uh, another. Um, it allows her, in a sense, to be um, out from under, in some cases, an oppressive husband, an unfaithful husband, uh, somebody who has you know, essentially broken the covenant. And, and we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. But you know, divorce was not about... Um, I guess I want to. I guess I would want to say. So far as we're looking through the Old Testament, divorce isn't something that's just happening, uh, and God is silent about it. Yeah, God speaks to the issue throughout. In fact, in Ezra chapter ten, verse ten, it says this: Ezra the priest stood up and said to them, "You have broken faith and married foreign women, and so increased the guilt of Israel. Now then." Make confession to the Lord, the God of your fathers, and do his will. Mm -hmm. Separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the foreign wives. Then the assembly answered with a loud voice, It is so, we must do as you have said. But the people are many, and it is a time of heavy rain, and we cannot stand in the open, nor is this a task for one day or two, for we have greatly transgressed in this matter. Let our officials stand before the whole assembly. Let all in our cities who have taken foreign wives come at appointed times, and with them the elders and judges of every city, until the fierce wrath of our God over this matter has turned away from us. So what happened? Um, they wound up divorcing mm-hmm under the call of God to divorce their non-believing spouses. Like right. they, they married these, they, according to these verses um, in, in Ezra 10, Israel was intermarrying. This isn't about race. This isn't about yeah. culture. This is about people outside of you know faith in Yahweh and his coming Messiah. Mm-hmm. Um, they were marrying people who didn't believe and it was creating great trouble. And God's advice to them, not his advice, God's counsel is divorce. Divorce them. Divorce them. So keep in mind that, yes, we can say God hates divorce. Mm-hmm. Um, we can say that there are parameters in which divorce, even so far, is permissible and cases where it wouldn't be permissible. But here in Malachi, I'm sorry, here in Ezra, God told his people, I want all of you to divorce your spouses. So you can you can say, well, this is an exception, yeah. this is whatever, but yet if God is commanding his people to do it, it isn't sin. That's right. And I mean, God himself does it, right? I mean, yes. he's kind of leading up to it. The wait, verses wait, have been wait, leading. Wait. You say God divorced people? God like, did, yeah, God, yeah. Wait, okay, hang on. Okay, so in Malachi wait, 2. Yeah, okay, so... In no, Malachi two, it, at the beginning, it, there he talks yeah. about how Judah had did this abomination by yeah. marrying a foreign right. god, right? Yeah, but God doesn't here, quit. Okay, He's but then here you're yeah. t- talking about yeah. you know these, he told them to divorce. Yeah, he yeah. told them because of their their marrying. Uh, yeah, yeah, their what? Say it again. Unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then here in Jeremiah three. Jeremiah, no, I would just not go there. Well, you don't want to go to Jeremiah no, three no, six no, to no. ten. I mean, here, nervous. here's some pretty uplifting uh, okay. verses. Go Jeremiah three. Jeremiah chapter three verses six to ten. The Lord said to me in the days of King Josiah, have you seen what she did? They're talking about Israel, the faithless one, Israel, how she went up on every hill and under every tree and there played the whore. And I thought after she had done all this, she will return to me, but she did not return. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. She saw that for all the adulteries of the, of that faithless one, Israel, I had sent her away with a decree of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but she too went and played the whore. Because she took her whoredom lightly, she polluted the land. Can you stop saying whore, Jimmy? I'm, I, dude, I'm reading it here. And I just, when it says whoredom, who yes. says whoredom? I've never heard the that. Bible. The Bible. The says Bible it. says it. In what context have, have I ever had the opportunity to say, here's all of whoredom? Uh, probably this week is what's going to come week up, is, is my a, guess. Uh, yeah, it's going to be your week. But go ahead. So, because she took her whoredom lightly, she polluted the land committing adultery with stone and tree. Yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah did not return to me with her whole heart, but in pretense declares the Lord. I mean, see, I mean, just the the words here, the unfaithfulness, the, the, the playing the horse, this, uh, this idea of unfaithfulness, breaking covenant with God, going after another, 
you know, uh, and seeking out other gods and not following after the one true God. What does he say there? I had sent her away with a decree of divorce. Yeah. God <laughs> divorced Israel. Mm -hmm. So you, this is the, what, what troubles me is that there are some people out there that will argue divorce is never acceptable. Yeah. It is always wrong. Um, divorce is sin. Now, I, I, I have a really hard time reconciling that with Scripture at all. Um, but then one step away from that is, is, no, divorce isn't always sin. Most of the time it's sin. There's a couple of examples where it might be okay, but God still hates it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, but not hates it in the sense that it is wrong. Sometimes divorce is justifiable. Yeah. Sometimes divorce is necessary. Um, but when and where, that's what we really need to, to figure out here. So, okay, so let's just recap so far in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. There is allowance for it in the law. Yes. There are parameters for it in the yes. law. Yes, and to protect protect it, the spouse. It's for protecting the spouse. Yep. Um, it, is, it is something that God takes seriously when it is done inappropriately. Yep. The, God sends prophets and then judgment for people mistreating their wives, yep. uh, neglecting or divorcing them inappropriately. Uh, and then, yeah, God divorced Israel himself. Yeah. So uh, that's, there's a flow. He commanded Israel to divorce all those people. I mean, that's crazy. So we got all of this kind of going into the New Testament. When we get to the New Testament, um, people usually go right to Jesus in Matthew 19. Yeah, right? yeah. And, uh, and this is where, you know, they're, they're really trying to, they, they like to trap Jesus. They're always trying to trap Jesus with, um, you can't with, trap Jesus. No, but they're trying. And, uh, and the, the reason, so they basically they want to, they want to catch him in a controversial, um, yeah, hot topic of the day. Now in Jesus day, uh, people were, it was a lot like today. People would divorce their wives, uh, or now today it's wives divorcing their husbands as well, of mm -hmm. course. But divorce just could just happen, and people were doing it for stupid reasons, for bad reasons. Well, and and I and I remember, like I think part of it was because of Deuteronomy twenty four, people misapplying that sense of what is indecency, right? right? It was is you know is is it justifiable? Uh, because she cut her hair too short. She cut her hair too oh, short. No, oh, no, oh, no, she didn't. <laughs> or dinner wasn't ready by five. Or the house wasn't cleaned. Or anything. You know what I mean? Like they would find any reason. That's a little little domestic. That's what that I'm trying a, to. That that was exactly. I'm trying to put myself in the patriarchal mindset, okay. oh, Joe. I got you. I got you. Thank got you. you. Good, call, good, good job. Good yeah. job. Um, and, but then the other sense is okay. Indecency is in the sense of adultery, right? Right. right. So they're 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 asking Jesus um, a question here. So in uh, Matthew 19, mm -hmm. verse three, and the Pharisees came up to him and tested him by asking. Is it lawful to divorce one's wife? Is that how they sound? For when they, any cause. Is that how they sound? Oh, that's they, definitely. That's definitely. Sort of like George Takai. Oh, my. That's how they sounded. So is it lawful to divorce one's wife mm -hmm. for any cause? And he, so I love Jesus. He, he goes right to uh, like the heart of the issue. Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female yep. and said, therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh? So there are no longer two, but one flesh. What God has joined together, uh, let not man separate. So Jesus' answer is, wait, you want to know if we can, you can divorce your wife for any reason? Stop getting divorced. Yeah. Stay faithful. Yep. Like that's Jesus. Saying. Jesus is in full profit mode. Yeah. Like is this pastor yeah, mode. So, instead of trying to find an excuse to get out of it. Right. Stay in it as like be committed yeah. to this because that is what God had designed it for. Their problem is 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 not uh, how to how to figure out divorce. Their problem is learning to stay together. Yeah. So he's like, you need to focus on being faithful, sticking it out, doing that's the right. putting in the hard work. Yep. It's really really hard. So I love it. That's just such a pastoral answer. Jesus is like, yeah. How do you? When can you get divorced? Eh, try not getting try divorced. Try not getting. I mean, even in in First Corinthians seven, mm -hmm. twelve to sixteen says this. To the rest, I say, I not the Lord, that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. Yep. If any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy because of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to peace. For now, or so, for how do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband, or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? Right, so we have these two examples, right? Yeah. Where the divorce issue comes up, 
They asked Jesus, and he's like, try not getting divorced, all right? Yep. Be faithful. Paul says, all right, listen, uh, I know you're you're a Christian, and you're married to a non-Christian, and it's impossible. It's hard. Uh, stay together. Say, especially so, if they're if they're cool with it. Yeah. So if they're like, the ones saying, hey, let's make this work, let's make this you happen, stay then in you it. stay. Before they get to any exceptions, yep. they say the emphasis is take this seriously, take this covenant seriously, mm -hmm. stay together. But then as they continue with Jesus, and then later as Paul continues his argument, there seems to be an exception made. Mm -hmm. uh, back in Matthew 19, um, in verse 7, they are like, okay, Jesus, you're telling us to stay together. Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to send her away? And he said to them, because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Mm -hmm. And so he says, all right, so you've been given divorce because uh, your hardness of heart, which can break down into a few different things, um, the inability to forgive uh, the, the the wife who has sinned against you. In this context, we're just talking about wives versus their husbands. Um, or it could be due to the hardness of of your hearts overall, like, you know, the hardness of heart is, is, that sinful men and women have. Mm -hmm. But the, the bottom line here, because of sin, divorce is allowed. It wasn't in, originally intended that way. So Jesus and Paul are always going to point back, let, let's try and make marriage what it was intended to Correct. be. Correct. But Jesus gets to the exception here in verse 9. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. So a couple of things here. Number one, whoever divorces his wife and marries another, you are committing adultery unless it's for the cause of sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. So here's something to note. Um, he says, if you divorce your wife and marry another, you're committing adultery unless it's for sexual immorality. This is not only, this is not dealing exclusively with divorce, but divorce and remarriage. Correct. So... To, to say this is the only reason a person can get divorced, I think, would be falling short because Jesus is not only talking about divorce. He's talking about divorce and remarriage. Correct. And I, and I think we're both on the same page that there are other grounds for divorce. I know some some conservatives would disagree with us in the yeah. sense that, I mean— They're wrong. They, and I think they're wrong. If if if, it, <laughs> if a spouse is being abused, get out yeah. of that relationship. We're going to get to that. We're okay. Gonna all, right, all right. All right. All right. Let's 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 finish this up. Okay. G Jesus says there is an exception. Mm -hmm. um, you can divorce and remarry on the grounds of sexual immorality. The Greek word is pornea. It's a pretty general term, mm -hmm. and so it can apply to a number of different things. Um, but you're going to have to draw lines somewhere and figure this out on a practical level. Wisdom is needed. You know, if a guy looks at pornography, uh, can the wife divorce him for that? Mm -hmm. Does that constitute uh, a breach of, of the marriage covenant or not? And vice versa. Uh, but certainly sexual immorality qualifies. Jesus says, here is an exception. So sexual immorality is grounds for divorce because it breaks the marriage covenant. Yes. And it would even allow for remarriage. Mm-hmm. Paul continues his argument, and, and now not everybody agrees that what you're reading in mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians there is, um, is speaking about formal divorce. I think it is. Um, but he says, stay together with your yes. unbelieving spouse if yes. they're willing to stay with you. Correct. But, uh, let's see, but if they leave, if they abandon you, yeah. he says that like, you've been... Freed. Oh, but if the unbeliever partner separates, let it be so, right? In such a way, in such case cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to peace. You're not enslaved. That's you're, right. You're you're not bound. You're not condemned. Yep. You, if they leave, you let them go. That's right. And so it looks like to a lot of us, Paul is giving a case where divorce and remarriage is allowed on the case of abandonment. Mm. And and yep. people would get very specific, like, well, it's only abandonment by an unbeliever. And I would say, well, okay, um, I, I think abandonment is the issue. Yeah. Paul is using the example of an unbeliever because Correct. he's trying to unpack this for He's like, listen, don't his point is don't don't divorce your unbelieving spouse. That's his point. And then since he's talking about that, he goes, but listen, if if, if they leave, yeah. then you're free. That's right. Okay, so I don't think this would only apply to an unbeliever. I think if you're, I agree, yep. your professing Christian spouse abandons you, I think you are free to, you know, 
divorce and, and remarry. Divorce, well. yeah, I would absolutely agree, hundred ten percent. But see, the problem is, is I think a lot of us we we, we look at the we look at this problem like divorce, and we think, okay, um, let me treat the Bible like it is a textbook, a manual for marriage. And now it's there's a glossary in the back, and it's going to tell me mm-hmm. every single thing I need. And some to know. Bibles have glossaries in the back where you're right. for topics, and yeah. that's what they think. Oh, okay, if it's not if it's so not that, right there, then I'm not. That, I'm out. That, that's concordance. That's no, no, they got yeah, glossary. They yeah, got glossary no, in the back. That's that. that yeah, there's a glossary. That's so, um, yeah, and, and, and sixty forty. And they they uh, 20, uh, 20, 90. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good math? That, that's um, better math. So I would say that uh, what we need to say is, listen, whatever the Bible says about marriage is true and authoritative, um, and, and, but it, the Bible isn't going to necessarily spell out every conceivable scenario as it relates to marriage. Now, the principles that we have will guide us through every conceivable scenario, mm-hmm. but um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is as we're looking at this issue of divorce, yeah. what we want to do is get down to the principles here that are that are pretty clear in Scripture. So one yeah. is that, um, in my mind, Jimmy, is that though divorce was not the original plan, it is clearly allowable, permissible, and even justifiable uh, and helpful yeah. in certain cases. Can we see that in Scripture, right? We've yeah, seen- I agree with that. Okay. I, I agree with that. If uh, Adultery is one of the things that, that we're talking about, but then uh, abandonment is is another as we're discussing. But then I would also say uh, abuse. Right, and, and this is the issue. Okay, so like in the Reformed tradition, uh, we've long said uh, divorce is permissible for sexual immorality and abandonment, mm-hmm. right? That's, that's a pretty confessional thing to say. And of course, I agree with that. Um, and I'm even okay with somebody saying, well, those are the only two exceptions. As long as we can define abandonment to include physical abuse. Oh, yeah. I would uh, agree with that. Yeah. So um, so some people would say that, but uh, but physical abuse, Jimmy, the Bible doesn't say you, you can't beat your wife. Oh. The Bible doesn't say that. Uh, the Bible doesn't. Oh, stop. Where, no, stop. I'm, I'm playing the role. <laughs> Where does the Bible say you're allowed to divorce your husband <laughs> if he smacks you around a little? You know, there are some pastors out there who would say, hey, man, just tough it out. Trust no. the Lord. Or, and to go submit. back. And yeah, to go oh, back and submit. I don't want to talk about Make that, that dinner. You know that. Oh, stop it. Stop. What I'm, that's what they would say. So what, when, when you're counseling somebody, well, mm-hmm. first of all, if we find out, for real now, no hyperbole, yeah, no exaggeration, yeah. not what we feel, but what would we, what would we actually do if we found out that a church member was assaulting his wife? We'd go physically confront him. Yeah. Now, by physically, you don't mean we'd punch him in the face. I'm just saying if he throws his hands up and tries to hit me, then I would. Okay, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about we'd go physically to his location and confront yeah, him. Yeah, we go and we talk to him. Yeah, face to face. And uh, so we would, want, we would want to talk to him. Mm-hmm. If there is actual abuse, if there is physical abuse. We will take her out. Like, yeah. yeah, get her out of the house. Okay, okay goodness. Tell okay. him to get <laughs> Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. either, yeah, we'll we, remove we're gonna her from that situation. We're going to protect her. her. And that, yeah, remove her from yep. that situation. We're going whether... to call the cops. That's the it. Cops are getting involved. Uh, we're, you know, we're not, we don't play with this stuff. No. Now, if there is physical abuse, if there is sexual immorality, um, does that mean you have to get divorced? No. No. It, no. It, it, it depends, right? Like, you can get divorced. It can be a good thing for yep. you to get divorced in that sense. Oh yeah. But but I think reconciliation is a priority. Like that is that's definitely a principle here, right? Yeah. Reconciliation is always a priority if it's possible. That's right. So and listen, if somebody let, let's be real clear here. Um if if you hit your spouse, uh you you should be held accountable, you should be prosecuted. Absolutely. But there are times in um in I guess our fallen world where one spouse will lose control for a moment and hit their husband or their wife. That might happen and it might only happen once. That's possible. Um, in such cases, if it's uh, I would, I would hope that there is the opportunity for reconciliation there. The problem is, is that I think by and large, if there is violence, it will be continual. It's yeah. going to, it's going to continue on. Um, so it, Reconciliation, if it's at all possible, we want to see that happen. 
But uh, at the same time, I'm not about to tell somebody that they cannot proceed with divorce if their spouse is unfaithful or abusing them. Yeah, or that, that they're option. somehow sinning. Yeah, they're not. That they're, that they're in sin if they get a divorce, because churches tell that, as, oh, as we know. I know. Look, we, <laughs> we're, not, we're not getting into it, but uh, we, we've had somebody... Uh, yeah, we have a new guy at the church, actually. Really cool guy. Um, and uh, he's, he's divorced. And I don't know the whole story, but it, I'm getting the impression that... Uh, that she just kind of she took off. We had a couple of guys actually, um, and uh, that are newer at the church, and both of them are one's getting divorced and one is divorced. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I was I was able to reassure them. I said, "Listen, um, you're not going to get looked at sideways here. No, because no. of your marital status, uh, your past. Um, even if you were the one that made the mistake, uh, you're still going to be loved and received here. You know, yeah. you know unless you're." proud in your sin, then you're going to get confronted. But yeah, then there's you know, going to be an issue. But yep. we're all broken sinners who are learning to repent. And I, you know, there's a lot of people here that are divorced or married. Um, one of our elders is a remarried man who was divorced and remarried, mm-hmm. a faithful, godly man. And so that's another topic for us. Can, you know, pastors be divorced uh, and remarried and still maintain their office? Mm-hmm. Um, we obviously think so, depending on the circumstances. Yeah. But what we want to say is that when it comes to divorce, we do think that there are um, biblical principles that guide us in understanding it. What I don't feel comfortable saying is a really hard, the only time you can ever pursue divorce is if there was adultery or abandonment by an unbeliever. Yeah. Because, okay, what if your husband is spending your savings on his meth addiction Yeah, and he eats through all of your savings, he's destroying his life and your life in the process. Has he not abandoned you, even though he's still in the home? Mm-hmm. Uh, see, I, I think he, you've got grounds at that point because the issue is, are they breaking the covenant? This covenant that... That's it. Marriage is a conditional covenant. It can be broken. Yeah. Right? It, and so I will be faithful to you, you will be faithful to me and all of this stuff. But it's a, it is a covenant that can be broken. And if the covenant is broken, then like God, you have the option of divorcing Israel. You have the option mm-hmm. of divorcing your, your wife. So, or your husband. Yes. For... Uh, probably maybe more often. More often than not, yeah. <laughs> so I would just say that uh, that's how we think about it, is yeah. we want to let the Scripture guide us here. We want to let the Scripture lay it down. Divorce, abandon, I mean, uh, sexual immorality, abandonment, mm-hmm. yes. But abandonment might be, we would definitely see abandonment as a broader issue. Yeah, and I think uh, as we're thinking through these things, I think there's one other kind of biblical principle that we've hit on that you've kind of touched on is be charitable with other people. Yeah. Right. I think too often there's this hard, fast line that, that Joe was mentioning of, uh, it's a sin. You're wrong. That's enough said. Yeah. Right. And maybe take a moment and try to, uh, engage the situation, see what's going on, see what's happening. Um, and to truly love and shepherd Mm -hmm. the people that God has given you. Right. Don't pulp it and pen it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, you're right. That. You're right. You're right. They just start hating and coming out blasting. Um, yeah, shepherd your people. Uh, and you're going to find that you have people not are, that are not only all over the map mm-hmm. ideologically or convictionally, but experientially. Like That's they have right. gone through things. Oh, yeah. And yeah. It's your responsibility now as a brother or a sister to walk alongside them, love them, and encourage them and correct them whenever you need to. And as pastors, uh, to shepherd them and to protect them as well. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head on to the website, DoctrineDevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can send up for the email blast or you can hit up the store and sign up for the 2018 Doctrine and Devotion Conference and the Spirit and sign the Church. Before you go. What? <laughs> I don't even know why you're you're singing that song right now. It just doesn't you make said sense. Sign to me. me up, and that how it goes. Sign me up before you. Like that. Is that is that how it goes? Pretty sure. Is that really how it goes? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm you pretty don't sure. know. I was alive talking. when Wham was popular. Okay, you, oh, you were not. Okay, yeah, but you were also alive when Washington uh, was <laughs> across the Delaware. <laughs> across the Delaware. So All right. it doesn't really. <laughs> All right. Maybe I was too old to really remember Wham. <laughs> Fresh pod every Monday and Thursday. Blog posts on Wednesdays. Video content nah. during the week. Yeah, whenever we get to it. Later. <laughs> I'm going to divorce you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs>